Welcome back. In the last module, we discussed about interpreting various sizing requirements and uh, how to derive about IOPS or CPU requirements, memory requirements, network bandwidth uh, requirements, etc. In this module, we are going to see uh, basically an example through a database AWR minor report. So that is an output uh, uh, from AWR data and it provides a graphical insight from data collected from AWR performance views. So once uh, you run AWR minor utility against any database, that output can be used with AWR minor utility and uh, that plots a graphical report uh, for the database. So we will navigate through each section uh, of AWR minor report to understand the sizing interpretation. So let's take a look at output for one of the database. In the first row, the output shows the name of database, how many nodes it runs on, the platform of the database. In this case, it's a HPUX Titanium platform. The version of database, which is 11.204, how many sockets the physical hardware has, how many cores it has, as well as any uh, virtual threads, total memory available on the system. And the days shows, this is 30 days. So the, while running, it has captured performance data for 30 days. Uh, which is default for AWR minor and then in the second row it is uh, highlighting you all of the uh, peak values for the stats like CPU utilization it shows 98% uh, that is used for this uh, time frame read IOPS is shown here write IOPS is shown here read MB per second write MB per second uh, how many logons per core or number of SQL executions per second commits Average active sessions, uh, system global area, program global area, or database size, which is showing up 80 terabyte roughly. So these are very important stats, and the advantage of using AWR Miner is uh, it uh, provides you all of them in form of a graphical chart. So not necessarily like these values uh, are to be considered for uh, sizing, but these are the peak values, and the further sections explains uh, the average values which is shown there and. Uh, uh, we would be able to drill down into all of these uh, matrices uh, in this report. So the very first chart is average active sessions by weight class and we have understood what exactly is average active sessions. So it is dB time over elapsed time and the left hand side the chart shows that uh, the colors represents the database time here. So one of the observation is the CPU cluster, uh, CPU is taking up 50%, it is contributed towards average active session, whereas cluster weights is contributing 19% or user IO is contributing to 17%. And on the right hand side, we have further classification of these uh, weight classes. So the first thing is like archiver weight on send request or DB CPU or DB file sequential reads. So the goal for us is to identify the, how much is the average active session which is uh, coming from AWR data and average active sessions is showing up 817 which is definitely way higher than the number of cores present on the system. So lo looks like based on this one it could be a CPU bound system but as I said like these values are the peak values so not necessarily the actual representation of the required uh, resources on the system. So we'll further drill down and see uh, what it shows in terms of average active sessions. So the second uh, so here it explains uh, basically it's a funnel chart and uh, for all of the important parameters like average active sessions or CPU or read IOPS, read MBs, you have a funnel chart here. And what we need to consider here is like where this funnel is ending. So there are definitely some outliers which is shown in this orange color. But we can see the funnel is ending uh, roughly here which shows roughly 40% or basically 40 as average active sessions on a regular basis. But these are the outliers and sometimes it has even reached 400 but that not necessarily uh, giving us that uh, that is the requirement for uh, sizing the CPU. So CPU on the other hand, uh, roughly 40 we can consider because funnel is ending over here. The average values are 18.2 here. These all uh, in red color shows the average values uh, which is uh, 
uh, there on the system. So same for number of executions for read IOPS. Uh, we see uh, it is roughly average in the range of 34,745, but uh, it reaches uh, to 100,000 uh, here. And read MB per second is uh, also uh, less than uh, 5,000 uh, MB per second, so less than 5 GB. But uh, this gives a clear idea on what can be considered from an average uh, utilization uh, point. Number of sessions is uh, roughly 3,000 uh, user sessions which are uh, connected to this database. The write IOPS is uh, shown here, like that is uh, roughly 30,000 uh, write IOPS. Uh, that is on an average but it is reaching up to 120,000 uh, right mb per second is roughly 277 uh, mb per second but uh, safely you can assume uh, at least uh, 2.5 gb uh, per second uh, on an average so important parameters are average active sessions uh, cpu utilization iops and M mb per second along with the outliers here for the graph like shows uh, the average active session distribution for the time frame. So this data is for December 27 to Jan 28 and uh, it shows the behavior of average active sessions. So all these green colors you can see 163 or here 491. So that is the average active sessions. There are one of cases where it has reached the probably 1800. So not necessarily this indicator of the normal requirements but it could be a problem window within the database system so average active sessions uh, is db time over elapsed time and uh, it shows how busy is database system and represents the sum of active sessions over all sessions at any given point in time the next chart explains the os cpu as well as database cpu for the database so you have to look for operating system CPU utilization against number of CPU present to get fair idea on CPU utilization behavior across AWR retention period. So out of these like these three nodes, these are three database nodes and you see database CPU as well as operating system CPU and uh, these are roughly in range of 30s or 40s maximum uh, for uh, database CPUs and in red color it is the operating system CPU so that is also um, shown here across all these databases so in case of in case of uh, extra base target cpu percentage would be less as most of the sql processing happens at a storage cell as a result more consolidation uh, density this chart shows the io average and max io of the database and uh, uh, read iops as we already discussed can be calculated from here because you know uh, how much uh, read IOPS is and how much read MBs per second or write IOPS as well as write MB per second so we can calculate uh, those data easily for our uh, sizing. This is segment activity uh, for the database and it shows the growth of uh, database across indexes or large objects or tables so that gives a future perspective also how much data we are adding every day uh, here that is gb added and then how much logical reads we are doing or physical reads we are doing or physical writes we are doing so that uh, provides uh, inputs for our iops requirements again uh, this is another chart like which shows you io uh, characteristics so io request by size and these large read iops or large write iops or small reads or small write iops they help you uh, understand the workload behavior uh, for a transitional system it is going to be more of a small reads or a small writes uh, versus for a decision support system you will have large read iops or large write iops this is the io weight event uh, histogram and uh, it shows uh, distribution uh, against like db file scattered read or sequential read log file uh, file writes and log file sync and uh, even DB file scatter read is typically used when fetching blocks for a full table scan index, uh, fast full scan, and also performs a multi block IOS. DB file sequential read, on the other hand, is a single block read and it is typically engaged for any activity where multi block IO is unavailable. And based on this chart, we see that like most of the requests, like, for example, here more than uh, uh, almost 90% of the request is getting served within a millisecond. 
even for in case of if file sequential reads majority 97 percent is served within a millisecond log file parallel write everything is almost in one millisecond so definitely io subsystem is not a bottleneck here in this system log file sync uh, activity is getting done in uh, less than a millisecond in case like if you have problem you will see like it is going from 8 millisecond or 16 millisecond and above so they represents the poor performance uh, within uh, io subsystem this chart is average active session distribution by day and the hour and uh, during daytime 8 am to 8 pm versus night time how database is behaving so this all represents the database time and uh, uh, we can see that the workload is a kind of mixed workload i can say because activity is mostly uh, in daytime it's more busy but in night time also a lot of activities are happening uh, within the system and it could be uh, you can also uh, make a guess that uh, maybe a reporting or uh, kind of uh, analytics is running uh, during the night time here. Some other uh, variables uh, which is shown here is like how many commits or execution per second or any kind of hard parses or log on behavior, uh, redo MB per second that is another important point to consider and uh, you can also calculate the network bandwidth uh, from uh, these data so the required bandwidth is normally redo generation bytes per second divided by 0.7 into 8 and divided by uh, the, this particular number and that provides in bandwidth in mbps so think of like if your redo generation is 1943 that you can find from your awr reports or uh, this particular data so in that case it can translates to uh, this 0 0.022 uh, MBPS from your AWR redo bytes per second is taken. Normally, redo generation in a typical application would be 20 MB, 200 MB per second. In a high high bass systems, it could be 200 to 300 MB per second. And this is what we see here. So, required network bandwidth can be calculated uh, from here, and uh, 20 MB translates to a 240 uh, megabyte per second as a network bandwidth. In case of a real application cluster, you have cluster related uh, uh, weights and you need to factor the GC related weights for cluster databases. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, XR database system can have very low latency, the infinite bands uh, in place, and they provide XR fusion, so that can greatly reduce uh, these particular weight events if that's the bottleneck in the system. This is about the memory stats and uh, it shows you uh, how much total memory is used sga as well as pga and uh, that can help uh, for your sizing uh, the required say for uh, system another thing to uh, keep in mind is on linux based systems since on oracle cloud infrastructure we provide uh, all the databases on linux platform so you need to have use large pages as true so most of the databases uh, when they get provisioned they come up with uh, these uh, best practices like use large pages are true or you can also uh, take a look at uh, how much is the value for huge pages because huge pages is something like uh, uh, can be calculated based on how much SGA requirements you have. It also shows the SQL percentage by schema and type and this is more useful to derive the schema based consolidation or PDB approach and also helps with defining resource manager or CPU or IORM plans uh, within the database. So it shows the activities, uh, the create indexes or select like is the most uh, found activity in this particular database. Then who are the users like who uh, is contributing to uh, these. So top 10 schemas are provided here. So here FN uh, related uh, user is contributing the most and then we have audit related user here. This was the SQL characteristics, means you can know database queries behavior in terms of elapsed time by top schema user. So just to summarize, we have gone through AWR minor report output and uh, I explained how to get useful data from report for cloud migration such as IOPS or memory or CPU sizing, network bandwidth, etc. The report also helped us uh, understanding the database workload behavior in terms of OLTP or decision support system. 
So with all of this, uh, the next module we are going to discuss is uh, capacity planning, it, uh, validating the cloud migration. Because now we know how to derive uh, sizing for any new cloud migration. It is equally important to validate the cloud migration and uh, we need to do a unit testing as well as load testing of the database. And the tool we are going to discuss in the next module is uh, real application testing that provides uh, SQL performance analyzer as well as database replay. SQL performance analyzer helps with unit testing of SQLs and database replay helps with load testing of SQLs. In addition, real application testing also provides database consolidation workbench, which is uh, basically a very ideal tool for getting advice on any cloud migration. So next, uh, I will see you in next module on how to validate the cloud migration.